Hey guys, in today's video, I will give an overview of the ballistics simulation system that I've created for Unity. It's called Ballistics. It's available on the Unity Asset Store. It's a more complex system, but it is physically based and it reliably generates physically based ballistics trails. I'll give you an example. So as you can see, that was pretty lightweight, pretty easy. In the console, you can see that it debugs some information about the impact, including the impact point and the relative kinetic energy. Now, the important thing to understand about this system is that it's a framework um, or sort of a package that you can import and use in your project rather than um, a system that dictates specifically how you use it. It is quite easy to use, and I do include some examples of how to use it, including a simple projectile demo and a complex projectile demo. But it is important to know that you will probably want to be comfortable with coding to use this project. So in order to go through this, I'll first give an overview of sort of what you're going to be looking at, and then I'll dive deep onto the simple projectile demo, how that works, and the complex projectile demo, and how that works. So at a high level, the projectile system is made up of uh, a projectile, and the projectile contains information about the simulation that it needs to run. That information includes a projectile, an environment, and a simulation state. In this example, I've set up a projectile simulating the M855A1 projectile. If we open that, we can see that it contains some characteristics. Those include a muzzle velocity, ballistic coefficient, cross-sectional area, and projectile mass, as well as a calculated initial kinetic energy based on these inputs. You can get these inputs for different projectiles based on information on Wikipedia or on manufacturer websites. The next piece of information that you'll look at is the environment. So if we go back to our projectile and then open the environment, you can see that this one is an earth standard dry environment. I included some different examples, but in the environment, you have gravity information as well as atmospheric conditions, such as relative humidity, temperature, and air pressure in atmospheres. This allows us to calculate the air density and the speed of sound in that environmental condition. These environmental conditions have a large impact on how the projectile moves through the air due to drag. We also have a simulation configuration. So simulation config includes information about the maximum distance that we should project the projectile, the simulation update timing, in other words, how frequently should we interpolate between the different projectile positions. It's a discrete, non-continuous simulation that's fairly standard. And you can choose whether you want to use a custom timing, timing on every frame, or timing on fixed update. In this example, it's a complex projectile. And this is a demo that I put together to showcase how you might interact with a complex projectile. And in this example, we have a particle system that we initialize when the particle starts, and a particle system that we initialize when the particle, when the projectile hits something. So if we go back to the demo and then run the simulation, you can see that we spawn that black line when the particle projectile starts, and then we spawn this little red uh, hit effect when it hits the box. So the way that I do that is by hooking into different callbacks from the ballistics projectile class. So when you create a new ballistics projectile component, you'll want to inherit from the ballistics projectile class. And I'll walk you through how to do that shortly. Before we get to that, I'll give a quick overview about these two options that you see here, prediction and simulation. You can see when I hit prediction, it outputs a list of different positions. So the prediction is basically an instantaneous set of different points that the projectile will pass through given the particular um, configuration state. Now, keep in mind that that's 
in the context of the current physics simulation. So if something in your game is actually moving, like if, let's say if this box was moving across the scene and we start the prediction here, then the projectile wouldn't know that this box is moving. And so it wouldn't report a hit with this box unless the box were already in the way. That being said, you typically would use the prediction to, um, for example, get a list of points that the projectile will go through so you can draw a, um, an accurate representation of the different points that the bullet will pass through or projectile will pass through. If, for example, you're doing a um, tower defense game and you want to draw a um, realistic projectile line, you can use the prediction calculation to return you a list of points that that will go through and use those points to draw that line. In contrast, the simulation is intended to actually represent the actual real place that that bullet is going. And you can see when we spawn this, we create a projectile plus those trails. Okay, so I've given that overview. Now I'm gonna walk through the simple projectile demo. After we do that, we'll look at the complex projectile demo. Okay, so I know this is a lot. I have documentation on my website as well, and I'll include a link to that documentation in the description. So um, at a high level, what we're looking at is that we have a class. I named it Simple Projectile Demo, and that class inherits from the Ballistics Projectile parent class. We're using the Ballistics Runtime namespace, and in that namespace we get some uh, we get access to some static information like um, the projectile origin and direction <clears throat> the main things that you want to know is when you're initializing your projectile so you can spawn this projectile right when you initialize it you want to call set origin and direction so that you can set the origination point of the projectile and the direction that it should travel in Typically, this will be transform position and transform forward. You also want to subscribe to the on ballistics complete callback. In order to subscribe to that callback, you need a method. I call this method ballistics results. You can call yours whatever you want. It receives back a struct of ballistics hit data. That data includes information about the actual hit itself. So we can check if it hit anything. And then if it did hit something, we can say, let's get the hit info, which includes information about the hit that we did, things like that. Or the projectile, or the hit details. During that callback, you want to make sure that you unsubscribe from that listener and then destroy the game object in general. And then the other important thing that you want to do is you actually want to call simulate. So simulate is a method in the ballistics projectile class. You pass to that method the projectile environment simulation configuration, as well as your two callbacks on ballistics complete and on ballistics update. In general, these are you know part of the ballistics projectile um, class. So if we take an example here, we add the simple projectile demo to this. You can see that by default, we're drawing a projectile field, an environment field, and a simulation state field. So these are the references that you're accessing when you ask for the projectile environment simulation complete and update pieces of information. Okay, so I think that's pretty much it for the very simple example. Um, one thing that you'll want to note is that the projectile moves in real time, right? So <clears throat> if you call on ballistics complete, you will find out when the ballistic simulation is done but you won't find out information about the ballistics trajectory while it's actually executing. 
So for that, I created the complex projectile demo. You can see overall, this is pretty similar. The main differences is that in this demo, I also um, spawn and trail a particle system. So that's the, this is the component that we're using on the projectile here that we spawn when we click run simulation. So when we click run simulation, we're spawning this projectile and this projectile is using that complex projectile demo script. Now in the start method, we go ahead and call our set, set origin and direction like we normally do. And in this example, instead of only subscribing to the complete callback, we also subscribe to the update callback. And then we simulate the event. And you can see here, we're just using these default values, the projectile environment and simulation state. But the way that I designed this is such that you can provide your own values if you want to. You can modify them during runtime if you want to. So we simulate it and then we also create the particle system, that black line that I showed earlier. Now the most important thing that we'll look at here is this get sim update method which is where we're getting the results of the simulation each time the simulation updates. So the get sim update returns or includes a kinematics struct. You can take a look at the kinematics struct here. It includes information about the current kinematics for this projectile, including the position, velocity, and acceleration. In this case, we want to update the current position of the actual projectile game object to the current position uh, of the kinematic information. And we also want to move the position of the um, particles to that position as well. And so that allows us to make dynamic changes during runtime based on the current state of the simulation before the simulation finishes executing. In this example, you can see that I um, I'm choosing to also debug information about the hit impact and the kinetic relative, the relative kinetic energy, which you can get from the ballistics hit data, which is provided in the sim results. And then again, in the sim results, make sure to unsubscribe from both the complete and update callbacks. Like I mentioned earlier, you're not required to use these specific callbacks. You can pass in any callback that you want, but make sure to use those delegates responsibly. Uh, okay, so that's the complex case, and I think that's pretty much everything to show for this. So uh, again, I'm going to include the docs in the description below, and if you have any more questions about how the system works or how to use it, uh, feel free to ask, and I'm happy to help. Thanks for watching.